Hello guys, this is the Duda 2 and this is my brief introduction to the rules of the game of Go. Um, a basic game consists of a board. There are various sizes. 9x9, 13x13, and 19x19 are the most common. Uh, the professionals play on a 19x19, but uh, I recommend personally a 13x13 because it's, uh, it's a good mix in between the two. Uh, if you get good with a 9x9, you're supposed to move up to a 13x13 13 13 and such. But uh, I found the time I spent personally working on a 9x9, it really messed up my big picture game. Whereas a 13x13 13 13 has a good combination of big picture games and not. Uh, most people are going to disagree with me and that's why we live in a, a world where people can have various opinions. Um, that being stated, I'm going to be using a 13x13 13 13 to explain the rules. Um, Go is a two-player game. Um, usually each player sits across from each other and they take turn playing stones. The weaker player takes the black stones and the stronger player takes the white stones. Um, in an equal match, which is what we're going to be talking about, um, handicaps and such are going to possibly be covered in another video. Um, possibly not. Uh, it's not really needed if you're just starting out because this is for the beginner beginners. Um, Whoever takes black goes first. Whoever takes white gets seven and a half points. Um, the points could be agreed upon, but um, you want to add that half a point in there. The reason is because there's a definite advantage to whoever goes first, and black always goes first. So black goes first, white gets seven and a half points, uh, according to American, the American Go Association, is what, what I'll be going by. But the different Go Associations allow for different points because of uh, you know the slightly higher level of play. Uh, at, at this time. So um, the stones are held like this by the middle finger and the reason is because you could have a nice click sound and you could smack it down something you can't do like this and Go is a visual and aesthetically pleasing game as well as a you know fun strategic game so um, this is the proper way to hold a Go stone you smack it down. The stones are played on the intersections they're not played inside the squares uh, like chess or checkers, which uh, allows for, um, you know, you could play a lot more places. You could also play on the edges, like such, all the way around, even to the corner section, okay? Um, the way the, uh, at the end of the game, whoever has the most territory wins. Um, if this were divided, white going this way and black going this way. White would count his territories, black would count his territories. We'll get into that a little later. I'll uh, probably end up playing a real quick game with myself to give you an idea of the game. Um, once again, it's a very basic tutorial. I'm just trying to cover all the rules and get somebody in there. Um, basically, uh, other than uh, territory, you gain points by capturing your opponent's prisoners. Uh, there are different methods of capture. Uh, if there's a black stone there, you want to imagine these lines, the easy way to remember, or these lines are their supply lines. If you want to imagine the stone is a mini army, or a mini person in an army, uh, they have to have supply lines. Without supply lines, they're cut off, and they die. White can surround uh, black like this, so black only has one supply line going this way. When white plays here, he captures the supply line, prisoner goes in the bowl, and... Uh, when the prisoner goes in the bowl, uh, at the end of the game, that prisoner is counted as a point. Well, let's just assume that white has black surrounded and it's black's turn. Black plays down, giving himself another three liberties, is what, what they're translated to in America. Three liberties. Well, uh, by extending, black just made it a lot harder for white to capture. Now, white has to do this. And by doing so, he captures these two black stones. And that's two points. Right? So, uh, generally speaking, uh, it's not a good idea to be captured. Um, one interesting aspect of Go is every stone you add, your group becomes more powerful. And now, white's group is not quite so powerful because if black were to cut here, through like this, now black is attempting to surround these two white stones. So white's like, ah, crap. Right? But then, White could play a move like this, which surrounds this one black stone. When 
a group is surrounded like that, it's called Atari. As you can see, this black stone here is one move away from being captured. So, the general move would be to extend like this, right? However, if black were to play here, now you have two stones in Atari. This white stone is in Atari, and this black stone is in Atari. Uh, as you can see, the, the black stone is one move away from being captured, right? And the white stone is one stone away from being captured. So generally speaking, whoever is next on the turn will get to capture. Um, capturing is relatively simple. People tend to make it a little too complicated. Um, if you go with uh, a corner capture, pretty standard. Black can, has two different supply lines. So white goes here and white goes here. White captures black. Simple. On a corner, black has three supply lines. White will have to play here, play here. Maybe you can guess it. Play here. Captures black. White's in the center. We went over. There's four supply lines. So generally speaking, this is why people start their game off on the corners and, and then move to the uh, sides and then into the center because the stones are stronger, uh, less to defend. Um, with the capturing done, um, you have to know what a group is. A group is any group of stones touching. This, this is touching, right? That is a group. This is touching. That is a group. Diagonal is not touching. Why? Well, because uh, if white plays here and here, this group is effectively cut off. They're now independent groups. So two groups. One group. Okay, so a diagonal does not connect a stone. Um, if you want to get into strategy, you know, you could study the different, uh, different shapes. There are some shapes that are very strong and some shapes that are very weak. So um, you'll, you'll, you'll want to look into that eventually. Um, there's really only two rules uh, in Go, two uh, rules when it comes to placing stones. There's the KO rule, and there's the, um, it's called um, the suicide rule. Oh, I never saw that happen before. Stone rolling like that. Um, this instance could show up in the game. Uh, this is an example of a KO rule. It's white's turn. White will play here. Captures black stone. Now it's black's turn. Now black will play here. Capture white stone. And it's white's turn. White will play here. Capture black stone. This could go on ad infinitum. Infinity. Um, so to prevent this, let's assume it's black's turn. Black will play here. Okay, now it's white's turn. Because of the KO rule, white cannot uh, place a stone in such a way that the board is exactly the same as it was before, which is what this would do, capturing the white stone. So white has to play elsewhere. White plays elsewhere, it's black's turn. Black can decide to fill this in, so it can't be captured again. Then it's white's turn, okay? If uh, it's black's turn and black decides to play elsewhere, then it's white's turn. Well, now that white played elsewhere, white could fill this in. Now it's Black's turn. Black cannot play. Black has to play elsewhere. And White can fill it in. I uh, hope that's not too confusing. Uh, if you have a question about it, let me know. Just watch it again. Uh, it'll make sense once you, once you see it, once you figure it out. Um, the other rule is a suicide rule. And I'll give you an example of that right here. Um, this is a group uh, these two liberties are considered two eyes. Um, what that means is no matter what, white cannot capture uh, these black stones. They're safe no matter what. When a group has two eyes, it's safe. Now they got to be true eyes because there are such things as false eyes where they look safe, but they're not. Uh, if white plays here, uh, black's group can still breathe right here. So it's alive. But white itself is killing itself because by playing, it's playing in such a way that it is killing its own liberties. So this is suicide. You're not allowed to play self-suicide in most um, styles of Go, including the one I'm talking about. So white cannot play here. So no matter what, if black invades opponent's territory and plays this really sweetly uh, and gets these two eyes, all these points are taken away from white and black even gets these two points here. Okay? Well, let's assume that uh, this is black's position. Okay, well, it's uh, it's no longer has two eyes. I don't 
um, these are two fall size. So white can play here. Okay. Well, then black will play here, and that'll capture the white stone. But then black can play here. Uh, and by playing here, he's actually killing all these black stones because his move, though it seems like suicide because he's, uh, you know, unable to breathe, actually the opponent who's doing the stone placing, if his move cuts off everybody else's liberties, uh, then it's a kill. Uh, his move does not cut off everybody else's liberties here. It just cuts off, off his own. Okay, so whatever move cuts off everybody else's liberties, uh, such as this move, all these black stones are prisoners. White just made a nice kill, and black is in a bad position right now. Okay, and this would be considered black's territory, unless or white's territory, I'm sorry. At the end of the game, you would count all these intersections up as a point. Um, so that's the KO rule and the suicide rule. Uh, really, the only other thing to talk about is an example that may come up. It's called Seki. Um, basically, what Seki is, is a instance that may came, come up where whoever plays first loses, so nobody plays. This is it on the board right here. Um, it's an example of... Seki, and as you can see, if black plays here, uh, white will play here, and that will cut off all the liberties of black, so black will lose. And then if, uh, let's see if I can put that back where it was, and if white plays here, then black will play here, cutting off all of white's liberties. So. In this rare example, nobody would probably play, because whoever plays loses, and um, put it back the way it was. So because nobody will play, um, no, nobody will get this point and this point. Uh, neither group's considered dead, but uh, uh, nobody gets the point. So if you find yourself in trouble in a corner, uh, and you know a couple Seki patterns, you'll play in such a way that whoever plays first loses, and nobody gets to points. Um, that'll be it for the video. Uh, it's been about 13-14 minutes, which means uh, I'm probably going to title the video Learn Go in 15 minutes. Um, if you watch the video a couple times, you learn everything you really need to play a game of Go uh, as a beginner. Um, the only additions that you would need are certain training to make yourself better and you'll need to learn about a handicap system where when you get better if you're playing weaker players or Play, you're weaker and you're playing stronger players. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, pretty simple game. Uh, it it's, takes a lifetime to master, but it really only takes about 15 minutes to learn all the rules. Probably less than that if uh, somebody were actually teaching you, as opposed to, um, you know, just showing you a video. Uh, that'll be about it. Um, I'm not sure where my video series are going after here, but uh, I'm going to try to do something with Go. I have a few more reviews to do of different products, so I hope to see you then. I hope the video was helpful, and uh, play some Go. Have a good day.